what was the story behind you creating your own new Steiner inspired school I think you call it don't you or Waldorf inspired school tell, tell us about the journey from uh, where you were to actually being uh, being forced to start up your own new, new school being forced out it really I mean it started with when COVID hit obviously it was it was actually at our school um, ironically it was at Friday the 13th um, in March of 2020 is the day Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually helping one of the other teachers move out of their old house that day. So I remember that day quite well. And um, and then that started my furlough, my 17 month furlough. So you've been put on furlough. You said you're, you're forced to do you, have, do you have to teach from home when you're on furlough or, or you well, just I was, school stopped? I was a PE teacher. So luckily, um, I that doesn't work on Zoom. No, of course. I, yeah. <laughs> So I'm not a class teacher. I have a pretty, I had a pretty good dream job at that school. Like I didn't yeah. take my work home with me. You know, uh, a lot of the class teachers did do Zoom, um, did Zoom classes, which with Waldorf is hilarious because we were a no media school. <laughs> so we go from being a no media school, like you know, you're only allowed if the if the if they actually follow the rules kids are only allowed to watch like an hour of TV on a Friday night and like a Saturday morning. And that's it. If they follow the rules, that's all the kids get. And now the kids are in front of a screen every day with their teacher. <clears throat> and then on top of it, they're masking them. And in Waldorf, especially how important it is for the teacher to be able to see for the child to see the teacher's mouth yeah. and, and speak. So now all of a sudden, you know, when they did go back to kind of like a hybrid in-person model, um, they were masked, you know, and so. But, so, but what, what do you think it was about uh, either so like your connection with um, Anthroposophy Waldorf or so like about yourself that gave you the strength to sort of like to say, I don't care what it's like that all the so-called experts around me are saying or all the talking heads on CNN and all these these uh, uh, marketing. Uh, these uh, It isn't science, it's marketing, isn't it really? Um, I, I, I choose not to believe them. I choose to go and sort of do my own research uh, and then actually follow through on that. Like you say in your letter, there's it's like it's amazing that intelligence doesn't seem to be so like a determining factor here. Uh, you've got you've got it, it has nothing. It has very little to do. I think this is one of the fascinating things. You get really smart people who have fallen all right for it. And of course, you get less less educated people falling for it. And the same is true on the other side. The people who completely reject it. it's not all they're not all COVID idiots as as the media would like us to believe. It's also reasonable people who have taken a look at the evidence and said, "Whoa, something doesn't stack up here." So, and, and what really interests me is so like, what's the difference between like them and us, the people that fell for it, and and us who didn't fall for it? What 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 do you think? Because this is this is sort of like a real freedom question for me. What, yeah. what do you think's behind that? It's, I, I guess I've always been, and I don't say this to sound egotistical. It's just how I'm wired. I, I guess I've always been a crit a true critical thinker. Like, mm -hmm. but I'm not somebody that comes to conclusions right away. Like it, in Waldorf, I'm I'm phlegmatic. That's my mm -hmm. primary personality. Um, I mean, obviously I'm all of them, I'm pretty balanced, but because of the way I think, I, I let things marinate in mm -hmm. my mind for weeks and months before I come to a conclusion. Sometimes I come to a conclusion and I'm very inquisitive and I'm very curious and I'm very enthusiastic. I mean, part yeah. of the reason that I love teaching and coaching is because I'm enthusiastic about it. It's not like a job to me. And that's kind of how I feel about when I research things. Um, so that same passion I have for like researching a game for the kids that I teach or finding a new way to teach freestyle to a swimmer is the same passion and, and inquisitiveness and critical thinking that I would apply to research that I do in private. Yeah. I would say that it's all kind of tied together. So yeah. I guess, yeah, in summary, critical thinking, enthusiasm, passion, um, inqui I'm extremely inquisitive. I mean, I'm very inquisitive. I don't know many people that are as inquisitive as I am. Uh, I want to know. I have to know. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know if that answers your question, but. Uh, yeah, it does. It's, 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 it's ringing through with me as well. 
um, that I this desire to know. But I think in, I'm, I'm a teacher, by the way, um, and in the context of teaching, but it can be any uh, any field of interest, but especially if you're talking with kids, if you've got that real interest, a genuine interest, not I'm here to communicate in information, but I've got a genuine desire to help children learn to uh, swim better, or in my case, to speak better Spanish, whatever it is. That's so like I'm I'm always looking for ways to 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 improve, and that means so like meeting up with reality so like thinking about it and so like then in some way some shape or form having informed yourself so like using that information to be able to work more creatively um, yeah yeah i would i would agree i um to me um it's not the curriculum it's the student it's me getting to know the student I'm, and so i guess if i were to put that in context of research it, it's the I don't know how you would parallel that, but I, I don't know if that makes sense to you, but I don't care what subject it is. I just want to yeah. get to know that. I want to get to know my students because yeah. the better rapport I have with them and the more um, connection there is between them and I, then it makes my job teaching them information really easy. Absolutely. So, uh, half half of being know. a teacher is having a relationship with it's like a, a good working relationship where they want to engage with you and then the actual the teaching part is easy but if you've got them against you because of your because of your nature or your for your lack of interest in the subject then they see through it a lot or a lot yeah. of them see through it anyway yeah i would totally agree and that's why i can't mask them i can't i can't do it <laughs> I thought long and hard. I'm like, if I decide to, because we have fires, you know, in California, and mm -hmm. we have, uh, so where there's air quality days and there's, and I could be outside. So I actually started when we came back in person, all the kids wearing masks, they could take masks off outside when I started. This was in uh, August, September of 2021. I think my letter was sometime in September. And I knew that once, and that's why I apologize to leadership in my letter. Yeah. Is because I I premeditated. I did this on purpose. I knew I wasn't just going to walk inside without a mask on. Well, I'm still going to show up. And if they say there's an AQI day or a rainy day, I'm simply just not going to walk inside. They will have to find someone to cover me. I'm not going to tell kids to put a mask on. Yeah. I'm not going to tell kids to run around um, with their heart rates up <laughs> and not... And not be able to bring more CO2. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, swimming and swimming, we do breath control training and hypoxic training and hold it. Like, I mean, that's, yeah. I already know what it does. I don't need to do it with a mask on a kid. So yeah. I was very transparent. I told the people that were kind of like in leadership, I'm like, I'm not, if I, I'm not going inside, I told him I had no problem when we had our first, like, you know, before school starts, you know, you do a few days of in-service. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I came that first day. I, 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 so I'm the PE teacher. So I, I planned like, you know, an activity for them outside and then they went inside for the rest of it. I didn't go inside. I let, I just worked outside, did some of the stuff that I normally did. And then I took off because everything else was indoors. And you, that, you same week, oh, that same week, that same week, that was on a Monday. On Wednesday, they had uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion training, which I could have done through Zoom. But I also, at that point, had made up my decision uh, about how CRT is. And I knew that um, DEI, and I didn't put this in my letter, but social emotional learning, SEL, are all, all of those things are CRT. And so um, that, I, I, I didn't attend that Zoom meeting. I'm like, I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. I don't need someone to make me feel bad for being white. Like we did some stuff uh, during our training where they did the um, bias stuff mm -hmm. through Harvard. Was yeah. it Harvard? The bias stuff. And I was like, wow, this, I, I didn't know it at the time. But then when I did more research, I'm like, wow, this could really ruin people's lives. You know, like this could really, I could see how they could use this as a weapon. Well, so this is not a public school. Well, mm -hmm. it is. It's half public, half private. It's a charter school. So because it's a charter school, it's not a private Waldorf school. Yeah. Um, even though the private Waldorf schools in our area still, because they're more liberal, they mask their kids and urge them to get vaxxed as well. 
mm. which was crazy. I, I thought I might be able to move to private school. It didn't work out. It, 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 they, they were just as they bad just as the as starter. Bad. Yeah. There was a high school, uh, probably 20 miles away. Um, so this is in Orangevale, California. The high school is a public high school and that's in El Dorado Hills. Mm -hmm. And um, the kids just, this was just a few months ago, did a walkout, you know, a huge portion of, yeah. uh, and of the students walked out one day and the very next day or the next week, no more masks. It was optional. And it's because when the attendance drops, they Make don't get money. paid. They don't get yeah. paid. It's that simple. Yeah. And that's I heard there's was something very similar happening in the U UK. Um, I'm originally from the UK, don't live there at the moment or anymore, haven't lived there for 20 years. But that was apparently also one of the key things that sort of like got the UK to move back to normality in, sorry, in the schools. It's like active school strikes by, by, by mass pupil walkouts. And I think it's wonderful. I mean, also a demonstration, an act of freedom. No, no, no. I'm not here to be just told what to do. I've got my own. I've got my own priorities in life, and um, I don't believe in your authority, and therefore I reject it completely. Uh, even, even as a teacher, I can feel myself wholeheartedly embracing <laughs> em embracing yeah. that philosophy. I watched. I don't always watch videos over and over, but when I saw ones of students walking out, I it just made me feel so good. I'm like, man, these kids are going to grow up knowing they did that. I think that's a big, a huge, big deal. Being an educator, I mean, that's yeah. going to they're going to be really proud. Yeah. And and one of the one of the things that uh, Tom told me is the reason he likes your story is because it's like it's it's a success story because. So you made this uh, this strong decision to to quit your job, and then you started your own uh, your own school. Tell us about how you started it and how it's developed since there. Yeah. So again, to be completely transparent, I came in second. I actually wasn't the. I am not the founder of the mm -hmm. school. Um, one of my colleagues is. So she worked at the school. Um, so there's two schools. There's they're a mile apart. One uh -huh. school is called. Orchard School. The other school school is called River School. Yeah. I worked at both schools. She worked at one as a class teacher, mm -hmm. and she she chose to leave because she couldn't mask kids. She didn't want to. She did do some of the um, in online stuff, but once they came back and were masked, she only lasted probably a week or two, maybe, and then was like, "I'm out. I have to go." So she left and started the school. And that was in August. And then while I was dealing with all of my stuff in August, September, um, and then I was done probably what late September, I forget the date of my, my, the date, the date of the letter. And then the next week I didn't come back and that was late September. And then I started working for her out of her house is mm -hmm. where the school is where the school started with probably 10 or 15 students. Um, the next in, in early October. Yeah, maybe mid October. So it didn't take too long, and I've been there ever since. So um, with and I've heard it's the, thriving. Is that is? I've, yeah, I've heard so it's going really well for the school. We did find a place to uh, move out of our house to uh, a bit a, a commercial building in the same area, yeah. um, just a mile away, and but we've already outgrown that space. It's only twelve hundred square feet. We're probably sitting at about twenty five students. We have a waiting list. Um, we're waiting to move to another place, which has taken a long time. Yeah. But if that all works out and we're able to expand our square footage, I think it will work out. Um, to, we're supposed to find out today, actually. Um, if that works out, we'll be able to go way higher, up to probably 60 students. And it probably wouldn't take no time at all. And we, we don't really market. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Um, the only place and what do you think? What do you think is drawing people to the school? Is it similar, similar um, convictions that are like getting parents yeah, to like say we don't believe this anymore. We 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 buy more into your way of seeing the world and and Wendy. Yeah, it's parents that don't want their kids with masks on. I yeah. mean, now they lift they've lifted masks. You know, they did that just a week or so ago. And we were a little concerned that might affect us, but it's really not. I mean, no one's changed their mind. That I mean, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You're at, you're at a charter school or a public school. They mask your kids. They have all these other rules about vaccinations. And you don't, like, I don't think I could ever go back and work for a public school ever again or a charter. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, 
I'm either going to have to go private or stay with where we're at and just keep doing what we're doing, which is, I think what we're going to do. Yeah. We're just going to keep building and building. I mean, I can't, I couldn't live with myself knowing that, you know, I didn't do it any other way. Yeah. So there's obviously, so like some, some, some inner conviction that is so strong there that, uh, yeah, that's like saying, well, I mean, it's, it's my authenticity or, or the job. And my authenticity sort of weighs far, far more than than the job. Um, and uh, it's, it's those type of people that um, I think people look to for inspiration. I think role models are very important in this in this fight. Um, and I think that's part of the reason why um, why we're interested in doing these type of interviews, so that people see that not everybody cowers. Not everybody turns around and says, OK, you win. I see the power that you have to so to force me to leave your job and people turn around and say no 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 you're wrong you think you have the power i have the power because i get to choose um and it's it, it's nice to hear when it goes well it works out like it has done for for you two and uh with yeah i do feel school. really lucky i mean i and i've shared my letter with a few of the parents at our school i i'm selective mm-hmm. but i i've and i've and i said hey if you know some people that think that would benefit from this I kind of use my exit letter in a way as like kind of marketing for our school. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's not my intention to really rip kids away from the school that I work at. Cause we did get a few from there, yeah. but really most of the students we're getting now are just from in the, in the area. We're not targeting yeah. our, we're not, we're not doing it in, a, in an addictive way where we're trying to recruit specifically from the place we worked at. Yeah, um, I mean, you're, you're showing where yeah. your real values are, aren't you? But rather than just having so like nice words on a paper, uh, also like on the web, of course, um, you're just like you're, you're living those values, and I think that's part of also what we're particularly interested in. So like uh, with the, with the philosophy of freedom, people who are prepared to not just talk talk values, but actually to to live those values. And it's not always yeah. easy. I mean, in, in in the world that we live in, it's becoming increasingly difficult. <laughs> Yeah, but the nice thing now is it's so easy to see who's on what side. It's just so weird. It's so weird. It's so polarized. It just, yeah, it is. Yeah. It's it's nice in some ways, but it's also a little scary, you know. Yeah, one of but the yeah. phrases. So one of the phrases you used in the in the in the letter, which I thought uh, was interesting, so you were already capable of seeing like the positive. You talked about the lifting of the veil. Didn't you? And I thought, I th- again, this is this is a, a, another characteristic of, I think, of people who are managing to turn this this terrible situation in the world around as like saying, yeah, it is terrible. You're absolutely right. But we're learning something. We're learning some important lessons about how corrupt, how insidious some of these organizations are. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not even about Democrat or Republican anymore. It's, it's just about, do you stand for your country? Like, do you, do you stand for this beautiful constitution that was written Mm -hmm. that we need to defend that these people think that they can just walk all over and pretend that it's not there. I would have never said that two years ago. It's still weird for me to say things like that out loud. Um, You know, but it's true. It's, it's true. Like, I would have never thought of myself as someone that um, would think that way that that intensely, but now now I do because I know you can I see the dangers. Steiner gives you the means of sort of like anticipating it because of, of, he talks about the significance, obviously, of like the times that we're living in, and he does like prepare you so like so like be on your guard, and it's it's like you need less less convincing you only need a little bit of evidence to say here it comes this this is it this is really it yeah i to just today was i'll just finish with this i was walking around in a store and i'm just sitting there like you know and and maybe less than a few months or a year or two things are going to be completely different and way better like i just sit there and have these little moments now where i'm like things are going to be so much better people have no idea mm-hmm. i mean we're going to live in a completely different world i mean it's it's starting to hit me more like how amazing things are going to be soon i really do believe that so um yeah i think it's it's awesome so thanks thanks for thanks for talking brian just okay, thank you so much angus bye thank you. bye